this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do a speed ramp with Twixter in Final Cut Pro 10. The speed ramping effect is accomplished by providing non-constant speed. Speed ramping is easy to do in Twixter by keyframing values using one of these two methods, either by frame number or speed percentage. I will show you an example of each method. I will use the frame number option to also demonstrate fit to fill. You should watch the overview tutorial first so you know how to do the basics with Twixter and Final Cut Pro 10. Let's start with an example using the speed method. I have already started the project and added our clip to the timeline. Let's take a look at our original clip. We're going to use the sailing footage. This sequence is about 5 seconds long. I can create a compound clip out of the source clip by right mouse clicking and selecting New Compound Clip or Option G for a shortcut. This makes a compound clip with the source clip inside it. I explained compound clips in more detail in the overview tutorial. In this particular situation, we may not be editing the clip at this time, but it is good practice to just make it a habit and make it a compound clip. I can double click on our compound clip to go inside and add Twixter to our source clip. I'll make sure the effects browser and the inspector are open. You can see once I've added Twixter to the selected clip, it shows up in the inspector. Now we can adjust the settings. We start by putting our playhead at zero and selecting the footage. We're going to leave our output on Twixter to output. We'll leave the rest of the settings at default and just go to the time remap mode. We're going to select speed this time. Since I've already positioned the playhead where I want the keyframe to be set, I can now just set the first keyframe. I want the first keyframe to be the original speed or 100%, so at time code 0, I'll enter 100 and go over to the drop down arrow and select add keyframe. You'll see an orange diamond that indicates that you've added a keyframe. This will tell Twixter that at time code 0, we want our sequence to play back at 100%. Now let's move the playhead to 1 second. We can enter 100 and add a keyframe, and now from 0 to 1 second, our clip will play back at its original speed. Now we can move the playhead to 2 seconds. We can enter 200 and add a keyframe. This tells Twixter that from 1 second to 2 seconds, we want our sequence to play back starting at 100% and increasing to 200%. Now let's move the playhead to 3 seconds. We can enter 10 and add a keyframe and this tells Twixter that from 2 seconds to 3 seconds we want our sequence to start at 200% and decrease to 10%. That's going to really slow down. We can now move our playhead to the end of the sequence at 422. We can enter 100 and add a keyframe. This last section will now play back from 3 seconds to the end, starting at 10%, and animating back to our original speed of 100%. So now, our entire sequence ramps up and down in speed, but the duration will stay the same. If I want to see my keyframes directly on the timeline, I can open up the animation editor by selecting the clip and go to Show Video Animation or Control-V. We can make tighter adjustments here if we want, and we can see the keyframes right on the timeline. We can select a keyframe and reposition it in time by moving horizontally left or right. However, unlike Final Cut Pro's built-in animation types, you cannot set the key value or animation curve type in the video animation editor. Let's go ahead and take a look at the result. Now we can see an example using the frame number option. I've already started the project and added our clip that we will speed ramp to the timeline. Let's take a look at our original clip so we can see the original speed. Now I can make our source footage a compound clip as we've seen before. I can go inside the compound clip and add Twixter to our source clip. You can see once I've added Twixter to the selected clip, it shows up in the inspector. Since we're going to use frame number for retiming, we will want to view our timeline with frame numbers instead of timecode. The way I change the timecode to frame numbers is to go to the Editing Preferences for Final Cut Pro and select the Frames option under Time Display. 
This will change the way that the time is displayed for the position of the skimmer or the playhead in the dashboard in the center of the toolbar, as well as trimming and navigation operations in Final Cut Pro. I'm going to set my display to source this time so you can find frame numbers in the original pre-speed ramp timing. Let's look at the time remap mode. We're going to choose frame number as the option for this example. I can go ahead and set my first keyframe at frame 0. I will start by positioning the playhead where I want the keyframe to be set. Then I can enter 0 because I don't want it to change. Now I can select Add Keyframe. This tells Twixter that I want to output the first frame of the source clip at the first frame of the output or result clip. Next I reposition the playhead at the next position on the timeline, which will be frame 50. I'll enter 25 and this adds another keyframe. This causes Twixter to play back source frames 0 to 25 within output or result frames 0 to 50. Now I will reposition the playhead to frame 75 in the timeline. I will enter 10 and add a keyframe. This causes Twixter to play back source frames 25 to 10 going backwards within the output frames 50 to 75. Now I reposition the playhead to frame 149 and I enter 149 and this adds a keyframe. Source frames 10 to 149 will be played back within the output frames 50 to 149. This will actually be a slowdown, but the entire duration will still be the same despite any speed changes we've made because the first frame is still at 0 and the last frame is still at 149. We need to set the display mode back to Twixter to output so that we can see the time remap footage and we can play back the result. Now let's see how to use the same frame number option to do a fit to fill. Let's say we have these two clips here on the timeline and we want to insert another clip into this edit. This clip is currently 5 seconds long, but we want it to be 2 seconds long without losing any of the content. We can do that with the help of Twixter. We can make this new clip a compound clip and go inside the compound clip and add Twixter as we've seen in the last two examples. We can go to the inspector and put the display on source. We can change the time remap mode to frame number and put the playhead at frame 0 and add a keyframe because we want frame 0 of the source clip to still be frame 0 of the new retimed clip. Now we can go to the end of the clip and see that it's frame 149. Since we want the new clip to be 2 seconds long, we will put the playhead at frame 59 and we'll enter 149 and add a keyframe. This will remap the last frame of the clip to 2 seconds. I can change the display to Twixter to output now to see the result. If I skim through the clip, you'll see that the last frame is holding like we saw in the overview tutorial. We will go back to the main timeline now to trim the clip and drag it to where we want it. Now we've filled the 2 second gap with our 5 second clip without losing any content. We just sped the shot up a bit. Let's take a look at the result. So this is how you do a speed ramp using the speed and frame number options and fit to fill using the frame number option in Twixter for Final Cut Pro 10.